So in this video, we're going to see a bunch of challenges to Bryce's account. And they're going to come of two kinds. So one challenge is about how are we supposed to extend this account to cases where we mean something, but we're not trying to produce a belief, but rather we're trying to produce a certain kind of behavior or something like that. That's going to be one kind of challenge. Another kind of challenge are just going to be cases that either don't involve audiences or they don't seem to involve intentions to believe, even though there are cases where you're saying that something is the case. So these are two different kinds of problems we're going to consider now. So it's very straightforward to see how this is supposed to work when we're telling somebody that something is the case, whether we're doing that with words or not. But what about other things like commands or questions? So suppose I tell you to shut the door, or I ask you to buy a newspaper, or I ask you what the capital of Australia is. In all of those cases, I clearly mean something, like I've, done some, I've said something which has a certain kind of meaning. I'm clearly not trying to impart a certain kind of belief to you, and certainly not in the kind of I'm certainly not trying to impart a kind of belief to you in the way that I would be if I was just telling you that something was the case. So these are cases where I mean something, but I'm not telling you something. The account we just saw, this version of Grice's account, is sort of specifically geared towards the case where I'm telling you something. So a big question is, how might we alter the account to account for cases where Speakers do mean things by saying certain things or doing certain things, but they're not telling you that something is the case. Grice does actually say something about this in the article. He does. He gives a definition of more generally of what it is to to mean something by doing something. So, so let's see now what that is. So here is Grice's more general account of what it is to mean something. You not naturally mean something by doing some action X, just in case three conditions hold. And the three conditions are just slightly more general versions of the conditions from before. So one, you have to intend your audience to do something because you did X. You intend your audience to recognize the intention in condition one. That is, you intend your audience to recognize that you intended them to do something because you did X. This is to get rid of the, the cases involving deception or misleading this. And finally, you intend them to do that thing whatever thing in question here, here was, because they recognized that you intended them to do so. So the very fact that you intended them to do something is meant to be a reason for them to do the action. So when I say close the door, the idea is that should give you a reason to close the door precisely because you recognize that I intend for you to close the door. My intention for you to close the door should be a reason for you to do so in a case where I non-naturally mean for you to close the door. Now, what Grice actually gives us is not quite as specific as what we might want, because we don't want just a general account of what it is to mean something, but we want a general account of what it is to mean the particular things in particular cases. So, for example, when I say, close the door, or when I point at the door in a way that clearly indicates to you that I want you to close it, our account should, should specifically say what it exactly why I intend for you to close the door and not something else. But I think the idea is supposed to be, maybe for instance, you non-naturally mean close the door by doing some action, either saying it or pointing at the door, just in case you intend your audience to react, you know, to react by doing that thing. But the details here are a little bit fuzzy and it's not 100% clear how, how, how we should actually fill them in. Another more serious problem comes from a cluster of cases where it seems like people are saying things or telling each other things or more generally meaning things, but various parts of Grice's account are just missing. So one kind of case Grice himself worried about later on is the case of making arguments. So suppose I'm trying to argue for some conclusion, uh, some, and I say, well, I, give, I have premises P and Q, I explain what those premises are, and then I assert R, on the basis of my premises. Now think about when I present my conclusion, I say the conclusion. So maybe the conclusion in this case is that we should, we should watch the movie Uncut Gems. Now remember, we saw before that in a case like that, for me to mean something, for me to mean we should watch the movie Uncut Gems, it must be the case that I intend for my intention for you to believe that to be a reason for you to believe it. And the problem is that you might think that in making arguments, this is not what happens. In making arguments, I'm not trying to get you to believe something by taking my word for it. 
Rather, I'm giving you a bunch of evidence, a bunch of premises, and an argument for that conclusion. So if I'm trying to argue, give you an argument that we should watch Uncut Gems, I don't intend my just saying the conclusion to be a reason for you to believe it. I intend for you to believe it on the basis of a bunch of other things that I've told you, and for you to do some reasoning to reach that conclusion. So the point of saying the conclusion there is supposed to be, to, well, to be indicate where the argument is going, but the reason to believe the conclusion of the argument is not my saying it, rather it's the other, the, re the, the reasons I gave earlier on in the conversation. So that's a case where you might think, I am saying something, I, am, I do mean something by saying the conclusion of my argument. I mean say something by saying, therefore we should watch, un watch Uncut Gems. But I'm missing the third intention of Grice's account. So that's one kind of case that's a, that, that seems to be a problem for Grice. Another kind of case is, well, we've been presupposing all throughout that there's, a, that there's an audience who I want to believe something, but there are various cases that are kind of hard to fit in with that. So suppose I'm writing in a diary to myself. Who in that case is the audience, and what do I want them to believe? So especially suppose I want the di di diary to be private and never read by anybody but myself. It seems at best that my audience could be myself. But am I writing these things down with the intention for myself to believe them? Maybe not obviously. I mean, take a case, suppose you have a perfect memory. You might still want to write in a diary, not as a record, but sort of as a way of like expressing yourself or something like that. In that case, I'm not writing in the diary with the intent to make myself believe things later on. I know for sure that I'm going to believe them anyway. I'm going to remember everything that happened. Nonetheless, you might think I'm still saying something in some sense by writing stuff into the diary, even though at best the audience can be myself, and I'm not trying to make myself believe anything that I'm not already going to believe at that later point in time. There are other similar kinds of cases, like think for instance about, so one kind of case that's due to Gilbert Harmon is it's a kind of grotesque case unfortunately, but imagine that somebody is being tortured to make them confess to a certain crime, they're innocent and they believe that they need to protest their innocence to the very end, they might keep saying, I'm innocent, I'm innocent, in the full belief, in the full knowledge even, that their torturers are not going to believe them. It might be weird then to say, well, they intend for their torturer to believe that they're innocent by saying that, because, well, they know for sure that their torturers are not going to believe them, so how could they intend for their torturer to believe what they say if they know for sure that they're not going to believe it? It's another, another kind of case where it's, it looks maybe hard to maintain that you intend your audience to believe something. One final kind of case is that you might worry that this can should just predict that certain things should always be weird to say, which aren't. So take a claim like of the form P, but I don't intend for you to believe that. That should be a pretty weird thing for anybody to say, according to the Gricean analysis. Because it should amount to, because if you're saying P, well that entails that you intend for them to believe that P. And moreover, they should be able to recognize that intention from the first part of what you said. But if they believe the second part of what you said, well then they should conclude that you don't intend for them to believe P. There should be something kind of weird about the claim like that, because on the one hand, because they said P, and because all the other conditions hold, it should be that you come to believe that I intend you to believe P. On the other hand, you should also just straightforwardly come to believe that I intend you, that I didn't intend for you to believe it, because that's part of what I said, and you should believe what I said, according to the Gricean account. So basically, it should be that I'm sort of perceived as saying something kind of contradictory whenever I make claims of that nature. But it's been argued that I don't necessarily always say something contradictory. Here, So here's an example from Foster Jeff Speaks. So he imagines an unfaithful partner saying to another one, so an un someone who's being unfaithful saying to their partner, I love you, but I don't expect or intend you to believe that. He thinks, well, that seems like a perfectly fine thing to say. I mean, it's a sad thing to say, but it's, a perf it's, not, it's not a contradictory thing to say to your partner. But it's kind of puzzling, given Grice's account, why that should be. Because I should both... It, because, in this case, the audience should conclude that I intend for them to believe that, I, that, that they're loved. But given all... But, they should also conclude that they're not intended to believe that. And that would be kind of a weird state to be in. That would be a weird thing to be for, 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 for the partner be, to tr be trying to do to their audience, to get them to, to believe both of those things at the one time. So we've seen a variety of problems for this kind of analysis in this video. 
One thing that we're going to try and do in class is we're going to try and see, are there any fixes to these problems? Maybe Grice's account could be modified in certain ways to, 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 to exclude these counterexamples. Or maybe we might want to push back on them and say, actually, really, they're not counterexamples in the first place because they're not really examples of non-natural meaning. So we'll try and consider both of the both strategies in class on Thursday.